Okay, here's the drive test setup. I've got these staggered. Well, I tell you what, the geometry on this thing has to be like super perfect in order for it to keep from binding. I've been monkeying with this for two weeks. I'm using a programmable sequencer on here so that I can kind of add a whoops bump the phone here little sequence now let's look at it from the front <laughs> nose gear still not in yet should be working on that here late in the week and then back down Probably going to tighten that sequence up just about point, point 0.4 seconds uh, yeah. on the delay there. I'm just playing around with delays right now. There is a point 0.4 second delay between the left and right gear, but I'm going to change it to point 0.2. Uh, but I like these little sequencers. I can control all the functions, reverse, positive, speed, timing, delay, pauses, so forth. They're definitely worth it. One more time. Let's see if we can kind of get in close here. This is the first time I've actually got it to work reliably for this many cycles without having to manually assist it. Because uh, typically, right, right here is where it jams up. And the same thing in reverse on the, on the push out. The push out has to be just right. And uh, I actually have a piece of aluminum tape over the magnets to help break the bond. They're just a little too strong magnet to magnet. But a uh, piece of tape, aluminum tape, uh, Teflon, the TPU tape we use for hinges works real well. Just to kind of weaken the bond just a little bit. Here we go. We're going to step back here. Pretty sharp. Now I just got to figure out the doors, which I played around with before. The door that's going to go here and the door that goes here. Now I've noticed when I had it set before, that the two doors, when they come together right here on the push open sequence, two sequences here, you got the push out and then the retract sequence tend to bind here. So this takes a little tweaking here. And uh, I'm speaking with Tom today uh, on his on his blog page, and he's looking at a, new, uh, a couple new ideas. Uh, for those of you who are really interested in this, you want to keep keep abreast of it because the print has already changed to a Rev C. And he's making a few changes here and these Hobby King struts that uh, he recommends we may he uh, may end up changing them and gonna do a few things there more on that later there's a little little bit more involved there here but there's a lot there's quite a bit of personal machining you have to do here you have to make uh, trying to do this looking through my phone you have to make the metal wire for this strut. This is a 3D printed piece. All the rest of this is a 3D printed piece. Stainless steel pins, magnets, so forth. This Hobby King strut is a key piece, which is now back back ordered again. And the retract unit itself and the 3D printed box that it's mounted for in the wing. And it nearly has to mount all the way to the top of the wing routing out. I actually had to take it a little deeper than Tom recommended at 43 millimeters and I'm setting it almost 50 millimeters deep so I've only got like about a maybe an eighth of an inch or less of foam on the top of the wing but it mounts all the way around. So right now I'm trying this with 3D printed pieces. Um, this is not glued in because this is not the final piece. This is actually I'm trying some new material that's supposed to be really strong. 
This is multi-jet fusion plastic PA-12 glass beaded. Seems to be pretty strong along with this piece up here and this pivot block, which he recommends being aluminum and I agree with him. Uh, I've actually had these printed aluminum. This is a very hard piece to make and I've sourced it with many different places. It's expensive. Uh, just to make these four these four pieces alone out of aluminum right here was almost 500 bucks plus. So this retract setup that I got in here is actually pushing the $800 mark real quick. So once we get the bugs out of work, it was to work flawlessly for you on the beginning. You're definitely not going to spend less than 350, 400 bucks in order to get this operational. That's including the nose gear, which ought to be pretty straightforward. I already had the nose gear made. I'm just waiting for the 3D parts to show up so I can cut the hull and get that mounted sometime this week. Uh, the wheels, 70 millimeter. I chose to use the uh, Flightline RC 70 millimeter wheels from their Tiger Cat because the way I look, I did have to cut the hubs down just a little bit. <coughs> but uh, I really like the quality of them, so that's what I'm using. It is a tight fit in the door. There's no, there's definitely no room for anything larger. And uh, even a 65 millimeter wheel might be a good idea. But you need 70 millimeters, 65, 70 millimeters, because the keel beam right here at the corner is only going to sit about an inch and a half above the ground when this gear is down if it's all mounted precisely per his instructions and i do say follow his instructions and his measurements right down to the letter there's very little fudge room okay just a quick demo talk to you guys later i'll keep you posted